talking about trusting or trust your calling. All right? Trust your calling. Remember I said a calling is a service to God. Amen. And what I want you to understand is all of you have an opportunity to serve the Lord. It's called being obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Speak through me today, Lord. Let me not stand before your people, but God, let you use me as I stand here, God. Let it not be about me, but let it be all about you. You lift up your son, Jesus, today, that he may be glorified through me. And God, we thank you for this word, that this word will set the captives free. And God, it will bring life to those that may be spiritually dead. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Trust your calling. Slide number one. If I want to trust in my calling, I have to faithfully serve that calling. Amen. Remember, a calling is something that God has chosen you to do. Amen. How many of you want to be used of God? Come on. How many of you really want to be used of the Lord? And you say, God, use me. Use me. You know, I remember when God first called me to preach. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to do it. So guess what I did? I did like everybody else. I ran from my calling. Amen. Anybody ever know you've been called to do something by God and you run it? Come on. You've been called by God to do this, but you don't want to do it because it's not part of your personality. It's not what you want to be involved in. And I, I didn't particularly like church people, to be honest with you. You know, because church people can be mean. Church people can be very vicious. And church people know how to play spiritual games. Amen. So I didn't want to fool with church people. I like dealing with young people, youth. Because you, what you see with youth is what you get with youth. But adults, oh my God. Adult people can put on some facade and they can act like everything is all good and they know they're lying. Amen. I thank you, sister. Appreciate that. I'm looking for a good amen, but I got one. Amen. But the Jesus understood his calling. Amen. Jesus knew he was called to a specific purpose. And when he, when he, him and God, the Holy Ghost had a conversation in heaven one day. And God said, I made people. I made mankind. And, and I made such a great creation. But Satan has come amongst my creation. And Satan has messed it up. But that's the devil's job, right? Just when you think you're doing something good, just when you think you're on the right track, there go that joker. He comes to steal, kill, and what? And, and God said, I have a work to be done, and Jesus volunteered. He said that anyone you can send, Lord, send me. So here's Jesus operating in his calling. And you understand something? Your calling is backed up by God himself. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever bought an insurance policy? Why do you buy a life insurance policy? When you die, you want your family to be cared for, right? And you buy a policy just in case something happens, right? right. That policy is, is for protection, right? But the policy is only as good as who's backing it up. Amen. You can buy something, but if it ain't got no real backing, it's just paper. Amen. Kind of like when you get a judgment against somebody. That judgment is no good until the person who you have that judgment against have the ability to pay off that judgment. Right? I can sue you all day long. And I can get a judgment against you. But you ain't got that. You ever heard that old saying? You can't get enough of the curse. Well, guess what? I'm going to get some curse juice out of that judgment. I might not get blood out of that curse, but I'm going to get something out of that curse. Amen? I'm going to squeeze it until I get some juice out of it. Amen? Amen? But the thing about, about your calling is, is something that God calls you to do specifically for his kingdom. That's what a calling is. It's something Jesus Christ himself backs you up on. See, Mark chapter 10, verse 45, expressly cleared out what Jesus' calling was. For Jesus said, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. That was the calling Jesus Christ was given when he left heaven to come to earth. He had a calling on his life. His calling was to not to be served, because you know what? A lot of times we start walking in our calling, we start doing the work of the Lord, and things start going great, and all of a sudden 
It's not to serve others anymore, it's to serve. See, that's where man get in it, but we ain't talking about that this morning. We talking about you understanding your calling so you can start doing what God has called you to do. And let me tell you something, when you start living in your calling and you start doing what God has called you to do, you're going to get blessed. You're going to walk in prosperity. You're going to walk in love. You're going to walk in abundance. You're going to see things happening around you that you never thought possible. Because you're walking in your calling and it's being backed up by God himself. And when God got your back, whoo, hallelujah. Oh, my, my, my. See, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as ransom for many. Point number one, thank God for those saints who just want to love, worship, and serve faithfully. You ever met people? That just want to love everybody. You see, they're crazy. Don't hate on them. I mean, you never see people that just want to love everybody. And you think something wrong with them because the world is not regulated that way. You know, that's the best way I can put it. See, the world is about everybody is about themselves. It's all about me. And, and to really want to love somebody and, and really want to worship the Lord and really want to serve faithfully, Crazy. You ought to be shocked by that. Because there's some of us sitting in church, we just love people. And when people see you loving those like that, they look at you like something wrong with you. You ever had somebody look at you crazy because you want to love them? You ever had somebody chastise you because you're loving them, those that the people call the least of these? You know, you, you ever had. Why, I, don't, I don't see why you go to the nursing home all the time. Why you mess with more people? Because I love them. Why, why are you always hanging out with homeless folks? I love them. You know, why, why are you always out there in the highways and byways trying to compel people to cry? Why are you always witnessing the folks? I don't want them to go to hell. I, I love people and I want to see them go to heaven. Right. And you know, people chastise you because you, you want to love and you want to worship and you want to serve. Look at what Psalm 50, verse 5. I want y'all to get this in the word, man. Because see, a lot of folks don't understand this. See, God has a purpose for every one of us. Just like he had for his son Jesus, he has a purpose for you. Amen. I want you to get this in the word, man. Because because a lot of us, we we, we want to hate on folk. And we, we got folk hating on us. But look what the Bible said. He said, the Lord, the mighty one, is God. Look what he said. And he has spoken. And when God speaks to you, it's for you. Amen. It ain't for everybody else. And you gotta, and see, I think what we gotta quit doing, church, is when God gives you a word, it ain't for everybody. Amen. Sometimes God gives me a word that is just for me. I don't run to my wife. Oh, honey, Woo, God gave me a word today. Ah, no, it's just for me. Because sometimes you chastise me. Amen. And sometimes you build me up. And sometimes he keeps downright just punishing me. Amen. All, all y'all perfect in this? <laughs> sometimes God got to spank it up. He got to whip me sometimes. Because that's to my own devices, y'all. Anybody? So look what the Bible said. He said, he said, he said, verse 3 in, in Psalm 50, verse 3 said, Our God approaches and he is not silent. You think God is quiet? You think God sneaks up on you? He said, 
says, for he devours everything in his way, and in his great storm rages around him. A great storm rages. Man, you think you need to run up on God? You will die. You remember when the ark was, was big and they tried to stay in the ark? What happened to him? You can't touch what's holy. There's some things consecrated. I'm going to get to the calling in a minute because your calling is consecrated. Your calling is of the Lord. You are special because God sought you out. Oh, man, you better get this this morning. I know in my natural I'm a sinner. I know in my natural I'm no good. I know in my natural I will get you. Amen. But when I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, big difference, ain't it? You ever seen somebody filled with the Holy Spirit? They can't cuss you out. They can't lie. They can't cheat. And they sure ain't going to be tickled in the dark. You hear me? When you feel the Holy Ghost, you got the power and the presence of God inside of you. And your light will shine bright. And when you walk into a room, you illuminate it. And when people see that godliness in you, sometimes they get mad. Because that's the devil in them. And the devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy your joy. But look what the Bible says. He calls on the heavens above and the earth below. And to witness the judgment of his people, he said, bring my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. Psalms 50, verse 5. See, that's the people who have made a commitment to say, Lord, if there's anyone you can use, use me. Amen. And when you find people like that, everybody don't like them kind of people. You're going to be a peculiar person, the Bible calls you. Amen. Oh, I thought the Holy Ghost right there. Whoa, I got, oh, my, 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 my kitchen got that direction. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. I felt like the Holy Ghost. Because what the Bible says, when he fills you with his power, when he fills you with his presence, when his glory is upon you, the Bible says you become a peculiar person and you become set apart. Then what happens is everybody begins to look at you not as something strange, but they begin to see the uniqueness about you. It's not your hair texture, it's not your wardrobe, it's not even your body size. But they begin to recognize that something different about you. Because now when you open your mouth, something good comes out your mouth. Amen. And now when you lay hands on somebody, you see results of, of your power. Amen. You see, see when somebody has been called by God, Amen. see the thing I love about the calling, it don't represent my past. Amen. See, my past has nothing to do with my calling. See, he knows I was sinful when he saw me, and he saw me coming because he knew me in my mother's womb. He knew me before I was even born. He knew the days that was I was going to live in, and he knew the things that I was going to do in those days. He knew I was sinful. He knew the sins I would do. He saw the calamity that I would bring forth. He saw all the destruction that I would bring about. He saw all the hurt and the pain that I would bring forth. But even because of all of that, he still called me. Amen. See, so it's nothing to do with your past. Well, I was a drug addict. Who cares? I was a drug Who cares? See, God don't look at that. Because he knew why he sent his son Jesus. Because his son Jesus came not to be served but to serve others and to give his life as ransom. So when he gave his life as ransom for me, that means everything that I did and everything that I might do has been covered by the... So we still got our mind on the stuff, the things that we do. See, your calling ain't got nothing to do with the fact, J-Bo, that you had some issues 
in the past. Your calling is simply God has chosen you to do a work. But see, we, we disqualify ourselves because guess what? You ain't good enough anyway. Can I be honest with you? You wasn't good enough even if you was Mother Teresa herself. herself. She wasn't good enough. Because anything born was born into sin. So for the fact that you were born into sin, you wasn't good enough. You were disqualified at birth. So quit thinking, my past disqualifies me from my calling. I hope I'm helping you right here. Listen to what it says. He says, bring my faithful people to me. Anybody want to be brought before God this morning? That's why I got up and came to church at 32 degrees weather. <laughs> Faithfulness will get you butt out of bed and make you get up and do something. Amen. 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 Faithfulness. Bring forth my faithful people, he said, to me. Those who have made a covenant. Anybody made a covenant with God today? Amen. When you called him your Lord and Savior, you made a covenant. You just got married to Jesus. Amen. You may not be married to a natural man, but you're married to a spiritual man called Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank God for those who just, listen, don't feel like an oddball because you love everybody. Be thankful that you have love in your heart and not hatred. Be thankful that you're a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. Amen. 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 Be thankful that you're a giver, not a taker. We who are called by God are first chosen. You get that scripture ready for me. Romans 8, 30. Romans 8, 30. Those who, who have been called are first chosen. I want y'all to hear scripture right here. Romans 8, 30. Listen to that scripture. Romans 8, 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. And those he predestined. Y'all know what that word predestined means? Before you even knew. Before it even happened. Before you even seen it coming. Woo! See, see, you didn't see it coming, but he saw it. See, see, you have no clue, but he has all. He can see all things. There's nothing hidden from him. Amen. See, if, he, if we was allowed to see everything, we'd be foolish. Come on now. But see, he said, and those he predestined, he also called. That word called chosen. He chose you. You know, the fact of it is, a lot of us, how many of us knew way ahead of time we were chosen by God, but we refused it? <laughs> Hold on, let me say that again. You knew God had chosen you to serve his kingdom, but you refused it because you were too busy having fun. Why you don't clean my house? Oh yeah, you don't clean, you don't clean up 
and help. <laughs> and then you try to sneak out. And you leave, but when you come back, that work's still waiting on you. <laughs> I'll never forget when God called me, y'all. I knew he had called me to preach. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I said, I refuse to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then God said, okay, let me get your attention. Then I met this woman. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing, Joseph said, oh, I'm a Christian. I said, that's a, that's a Christian. I didn't know what a Christian was. Uh, I quickly found out. Yeah. <laughs> I quickly found out what a Christian was. But see, our foundation in Christ Jesus becomes the truth in our relationships. Why did I put that there? See, when you're serving others, it takes a measure of God in you. When you're serving people, people hurt you. Even those you're trying to help. You ever try to help somebody and they're fighting you from helping them? See, we're trying to keep relaying new foundation. Listen, salvation is only in one name. Amen. It's not church doctrine. It's in the name of. Only in Jesus can you be saved. That's the foundation of everything we do in this church. It doesn't matter whether it's serving the homeless, whether it's dealing with overcoming, what is dealing with people in need, everything we do is it's in the name of Jesus. And everybody comes to these doors, we love them in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, in between. Everybody's on the same level when you call on the name of Jesus. See, that's our foundation. And when you try to do it for any other reason other than in the name of Jesus, you're doing it unto your And that's how your calling gets skewed. 
Trying to help you this morning. And that's with prolific speakers. So when it starts, it's not about him no more, and it's all about you, you lose sight of God. I'm going to tell you something, folks. It doesn't matter how big the church gets, if the church loses its foundation, it's just a glorified country club. It's a glorified rock concert. It's a glorified speaking engagement for somebody. Amen. Amen. So, so the, the, the worship and the love and the, and the service has to be on the foundation of Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what color they are. Everything we do it has to be done through the will of God, for the service of God, and that when people get set free, it's God who set them free, not me. I don't get no credit. I don't get no credit. You don't get no credit. Well, well guess who I brought to church? Guess who I helped get saved? Guess who I got saved? You didn't get nobody saved. <laughs> I asked somebody to tell you, man, I got so and so saved. Where did you get somebody saved? <laughs> you ever had people do that? They get you in front of dead Christian folk and let everybody know, I brought you to church. You were my guest. I got you saved. I got you into it. Where did it come from? Why Jesus in all this thing? Jesus was the one that helped me put the dope down. Jesus was the one who helped me get my life right. Jesus was the one who took all my craziness and brought sense to it. Amen. I had somebody, man, was trying to unleash all this crazy. I said, hey, hey, keep your crazy to yourself. Don't unleash that to me. Uh-uh. Keep your crazy to me. I said, look, I love you. Keep that to yourself. I love you just the way you are. You don't have to show me your crazy. Keep your crazy to yourself. That between you and the Lord. I can't understand it. I can't fix it. I can't do nothing about it. So keep it to yourself. <laughs> and I wouldn't say that in the ugly way because I didn't want to deal with it. I want to deal with the person. Amen. And when me and the person connected, a beautiful person. But when they start throwing all that up, <laughs> No, no, not today. I got too much going on today to deal with that. Because if you shut it down, guess what? You're not help, you, you, you helping them. You understand? So, so I'm trying to get you to understand. I'm preaching this thing this morning, man. Your foundation has to be Jesus. And then that person realize, I'm just trying to love you. I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to love, worship, and serve faithfully. I've been chosen by God to do this. I didn't want to do it. He called me to do it. Since he called me to do it, I want to do it in his power, in his love, in his time, in his grace, in his mercy. Because if I had to show up. See, quit mixing your calling with your gifts. Your calling is not your gifts. Your calling is not your talents. Your calling is your service to God. And when God calls you to do a work, you better do it under his power and through his power. And when you do it that way, he gets the glory. And when you do it, you got to faithfully serve. You can't be wishy-washy. Because nobody want a wishy-washy Christian. One minute you're in, one minute you got attitude. Today I call you, you want to worship God. Tomorrow I call you, you want to cuss everybody out. You ever met them kind of people? Oh, I'll give you a ride today, but tomorrow I can't give you a ride. What happened between yesterday and today? Personality. <laughs> Come on, man. You ever met somebody that's multiple? Multiple? I'm looking beyond me here. She just told me. She knows what I'm looking at. She knows exactly. multiple personalities. One minute they're happy, the next minute they're like, but why are you mad? What you mad at? Who are you mad at? I don't know. I'm just mad. <laughs> but she got the love of Jesus. Give me the next slide, and I'm going to wrap this thing up. Now, I want y'all to get this morning. See, see, if, if I want to trust my calling, I got to not only faithfully serve that calling, this is what I have to do. I have to trust completely in God. That's hard to do, though. Can I be honest? To trust completely in God, you need 
It's hard to do. The devil I'm trusting God completely. I gotta take myself out of the equation. And you know I love me some me. <laughs> and I think I'm all that sometimes. I really do. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> but you think about it. How many of you love yourself? You should. You should. When I look in the mirror, I think I'm six foot two. <laughs> Because I got, I got a little step too, I step up on it. <laughs> I do. But you not love yourself, man. Listen, trust in the Lord and do good. That's the point right there. Do good. You will do good. You will do good. And you know, there are people, I love this God, but trust me, I'm not one of these kind of people. But I love people who love to do good. Amen. You ever met them do good? Come on, you ever met them do good? Caesar wanted them to do good. <laughs> Look here. I'm going to put them on blast, y'all. I've been knowing this guy for about 27 years now. And he always happy. Sweet to say, something happy to say, and you're always skipping around. <laughs> they do sit down and shut up. You know, because he's always happy. His wife is just ready to go. Oh, no problem. He's good enough. <laughs> he can he can be on his last two dollars. Oh, here you go. Let me bless you. I'm like, dude, that's your last ten dollars. I gave it. Now give me some more. I mean, he always doing good. He's a do good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ever met them people? They like no matter what you say to them, they got something sweet to say back. Like you try to provoke them, you know what I'm talking about? You try to, you try to throw one in there and see if they go, surely I'm gonna get it this time. He just look at you this. Trust the Lord, Amen. and for some of us to do good, oh my God. Be honest with you, for some of y'all to really do good, is it a stretch? Yeah. Come on. For some of y'all to do good, now hold on, let me bring it home. Y'all been dating for a little while. You know her temperament, and you know his temperament. And he can whine, and belly ache, and just, oh, oh, and you want to tell him, get over it. Well, you know she can fuss, she can raise cane, and she can be so unsatisfied. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, you ain't going to eat today. <laughs> she, she, no, 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 I'm trying to make a real point here. I'm trying to make a real point. She, so, so that they going to make it turn to marriage. You understand? And if you, if you can't deal with each other while you date each other, how you going to love each other when you get married? You understand? And see, what God wants, God wants us to love him so much that no matter where we at, no matter who we with, no matter what's going on in our life, we can look at everybody and say, you know what, but as for me and my house, we're going to shut them up no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the conditions are, no matter what the situation may call for. I know God got my back, so I'm not going to fall into sin. I'm not going to fall into temptation. I'm not going to give up my testimony. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. No matter what God gives me, I'm going to be satisfied. That, that takes a calling to be a Christian. That takes a calling to say I truly love the Lord. That takes a calling to say no when my flesh wants to say yes. I'm going to tell you something. That takes a mature Christian to say no when your flesh wants to say yes. Because see, deep down inside, when I said I made a covenant with God, I made God my Lord and Savior. I made a covenant with him. And for me to do otherwise is a lie. Come on now. Well, I can't blame you because 
she made me mad, is that a good excuse? I can't be mad because they robbed me of my money. Or they broke my heart. Anybody ever use that excuse? I'm mad, so that's why I said what I said. Because I was mad. I got my bill out on it. Don't know. Come on now. So this week, walk in your call. When that devil raises his head, now I'm not saying she a devil. I'm saying she a devil. I ain't said that. But when they come and bite at you, Love them. You bless those who. And you pray for those who despite to come up. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Because she don't want to hear it all. She don't want to hear none of that. You hear what I just said? You bless those who curse you. You pray for those who despite to come up. That's being a Christian. That's walking in my calling. Because I'm born again. Anybody born again this morning? See, we're going to be the church of the living God. See, when, when we give our time, our time, and our trust out of love, he said, listen, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely and prosper. Anybody want to be safe this week? Do good. Anybody want to prosper this week? Do good. See, when we give our time, man, Friday morning, I was so tired because Thursday night I had to go to the TV station in North Cross in all that rain. I was shifting a little bit. My little arm was hurting. My leg was hurting because I was shifting this way. So I got in the vessel. That knee joke. My arm is hurting. But she was loved. Amen. I said, pray for her. Okay. Reluctantly. And she laid hands on my arm. Lord, bless her. I don't care what that do for me. It may not do nothing for y'all. But when she obedient and she prayed for my little arm, I said, now my leg hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Terry, I tried to love you, man. I love you, man. I said, get my baby. But see, we reap. Listen, listen, listen. Y'all better get this right here. When we, when, we, when we give our time, our time, and this is the big one, our trust. Trust. When you give your trust to somebody, this, 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 hear what I'm saying. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Because I've lost her trust. I've, I've done dirty and I've lost her trust. I'm being transparent here. And I've broken her heart to the point where she didn't trust me. Now, I know y'all don't want y'all pastor to admit that, but it's the truth. I've been married to Jenny 26 years. I blessed her. Bad. And finally, I regained that trust. Finally, and I had to thank you. I said, thank you for opening your trust again for me. Amen. Thank you for trusting me one more time. Amen. In my mouth, I promise. He said, uh-uh. Mm. Keep walking with God. That's all I want you to do. Keep walking with God. And everything to love is able to be appropriated. Not inhibited or hindered. Amen. See, sometimes I'm trying to teach y'all something this morning. See, because now I have to recognize when, when I'm in the flesh, I'm in sin. When I'm in my own power, I'm doing it my way. But when I'm, when I'm trusting my calling and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I've got God on the inside, then now that trust is rebuilt. That trust is now given. And it's not given sparingly. It's given fully. 
And when someone fully trusts you, when you knew you lost their trust, and they open that trust up to you again, you better not take it for granted. Let me tell you something. For God so loved the world that he gave his son as a ransom to come and serve others. And the way I serve others, I got to have a clean voice. I need his spirit upon me. I need his true love operating through me. And my worship has to be in the right place. And when I, when I serve, I got to serve faithfully. And when I do that, he chooses me above the rest. And when he chooses me, he justifies me. And not only does he justify me, he brings me to his glory. And he glorifies me. Then we're able to reestablish relationship in the right way. And I want to share with you all, please turn me up, Mike. I want to share with you all that trust when we first got married. Um, and, you know, I'm Christian. I'm filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank God Almighty tells you everything when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. So I, I'm, you know, stay close to God and you pray. One day, I came home. I went into the restroom, and he had a, you know, he used to be a drug dealer. But look what God is doing now. But one day, he had a, a I don't know what you call it, a roach. Am I saying it right? <laughs> he got a roach in the, he got a roach in the tongue. I'm like, do what? The devil is a lie. God, you told me to marry this man. I know God told me that he was the one, and I know that. But God was transforming him, and I've forgiven him. But I will tell you this, boy, that was some serious stuff that I had to grow in to pray through and trust. I didn't go and say, oh, I'm divorcing you and all that stuff over there, but I really cried out to God. And, but that's what God does. Also, Lord God, you probably the just bust this time. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last point. The reason why we got to trust God completely, he will expose these things to us. You ain't got a word. Vengeance is mine, says the. You ain't got to go around because you're going to make the fight, you're going to find it. But if you trust in the Lord, that's what he's going to expose it. Amen. Because when we give him our time, our time, and our trust in love, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All of the day. And in the case of, that's not a time God will provide for you. That's not a time he won't look out for you. That's not a time he won't protect you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And he will read. Build things that will destroy. He can rebuild trust. He can rebuild your, your, your titles. He can rebuild your image. He can rebuild everything that you've lost. God can restore it. He can break, he can take something that was broken into pieces. And you look at it, it's all been redone. And not only redone, but better. See, Jesus is still alive. And people who are trapped in bondage of fear and sin still need to hear about Jesus. That's why we got to trust our calling. Because when I'm walking in my calling, I'm helping save lives. Whose lives? First, my lives. Second, those who are most dear to me. And thirdly, everything that comes in, in contact. What's that song you sung about? Everything attached to me? See, if it's attached to me, I don't want to kill it. I don't want to destroy it. I don't want to hurt it. I don't want to break it up. I want to build it up. I want to restore it. I want to bring it into its fullness. Because everything attached to me wins when I'm trusting in my call. Y'all got that this morning? So here's the altar call. Stand in your feet. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18. That is our closing scripture this morning. Luke chapter 4. I've been called to proclaim what? Y'all know the scripture? Freedom to the captives. I've been called to give 
sight to the blind. Amen. I've been called to set the captive free. Why? Because I'm walking in my calling. And when I'm walking in my calling, everything that's attached to me, then